you know, that, the flip side of that, and it just wasn't something I was going to bring up, but uh, the theory of uh, construction defect affects folks like us. So, so as a subcontractor, maybe as a landscaper, not so much in what we do, um, you know, kind of being able to capture subcontractors like ourselves involved with landscaping uh, when there's a defect to some other part of the property, but we kind of get swept up in that whole deal. And usually you'll see if there's any bank financing involved or anything, people are going to sign waivers of mechanics liens, for instance. Uh, so it's going to be difficult for you guys as subs to protect yourself vis-a-vis -vis, vis -vis the property. You may not have a mechanics lien in the property. Um, but to, or if, if you're saying to reach from the landowner's standpoint, to reach the subcontractors, difficult to do. So, but uh, begs a question again, uh, do, you, do you deal with uh, contractors and help them kind of set up, you know, reviewing contracts and stuff um, like that? Yeah, Steve Schneider in my office actually worked for the modular home industry as their chief lobbyist for years and before that Pennsylvania Builders Association. So that's his ballywick, but yeah, we do do a lot of that. Okay, great. Carl Rominger and Eric Verodi are with us here this morning. And, um, you know, one of the things that's kind of interesting to me is the fact that uh, we as homeowners are liable for uh, problems that our trees, in this case, uh, cause. But, um, and, and interestingly, if you want to do something to a tree that's uh, along the street or whatever, you have to often get permission of the township or borough or whatever municipality. But when something that they own causes a problem, you know, falls on a car, blocks traffic or whatever, um, they're, they're not liable. How, how does that happen? Well, they're the king, and you can't sue the king. So you have to start from the proposition that the government can't be sued. Now, Pennsylvania gives you nine reasons you can sue them. They exempt themselves from sovereign immunity. So there's an auto exemption. If you get hit by the municipal uh, bus uh, and it's auto negligence, or if it's a defect to real estate, and so this is where it gets interesting with a tree, right? Because there's a tree branch falling a defect to real estate. Um, but besides the sovereign immunity issues, the other issue you have with the township is the same issue you have with another landowner, which is you still got to show, because a tree, for instance, is a naturally occurring condition of the land. And if a naturally occurring condition of the land falls over on you or something bad happens, without more, there is no liability. There has to be some duty or negligence undertaken. Um, so we were talking, about, I think, before the show started, about a tree that had um, some damage previous to it, and somebody should know uh, that it might be it at risk of falling, then maybe they have a duty to protect their neighbor, uh, depending on their knowledge. But if a tree just falls over, you know, in the yard, and it may not be anybody's fault, there may be no recourse, but municipality gets the second level. So even if you could show that they trimmed it improperly, for instance, um, it's not a fixture to real estate in the traditional sense. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't generally. So, so in managing trees, for example, in a township or borough or, or city, um, are, are they obligated to follow best practices? I mean, can, is there ways to get after them because, hey, look, you know what? You're not supposed to put that black stuff on tree wound. Uh, the short answer is as long as they can hide behind sovereign immunity, there's no ability of the individual lawsuit to regulate them. Um, you could still file, though, nuisance suit, for instance. Uh, so townships can still be restrained or ordered to do things uh, depending on uh, what, what kind of conditions they're creating. So if they're channeling water onto your property, for instance, uh, you could get a, an order of court to require them not to do it. Okay, and well, I want to talk about that later, but Eric, you're uh, well, that, it, it, foaming it, at the mouth. Yeah, it made me think of something, or it, 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 I need to get the question answered. I guess on a, you know, the extremes are that you can look at a college campus where they'll go to great lengths to manage risk. Uh, to the point where they'll have a full-time person employed who is a risk manager, and one of the things they're constantly looking at mm -hmm. are trees, and so they will go to great lengths to do that. But it sounds like we're describing in a municipal situation, at least in Pennsylvania, where uh, they're given an out to absolutely not have to take care of their trees, and even though the excuse that Bob and I always hear is, oh, we don't have the budget for that, you know, we need to, uh, you know, fix potholes, but it sounds like in addition to not having a budget, they also have an easy out. And and if you can get to them uh, for, for the condition of the roadway or the negligent ma maintenance of a roadway, for instance, you might be able to bootstrap in an issue uh, with a tree. So you've got to get under their sovereign immunity. And one of the cases that comes to mind isn't a tree case, but it just involves there was a prison and there was a table saw. And the uh, prisoner was hurt by this negligently maintained table saw that they had the poor guy cutting wood on. And the government weaseled out saying, Yes, it was bolted down to the ground, but it's still just a table, so it's not a fixture to real estate. 
It was just bolted down so it didn't, you know, roll around when it was being used. Uh, and as a result, it's not a true fixture to the real estate. Therefore, we have no, we have no duty. And we have, more importantly, we have sovereign immunity at this point. And you can't get in under one of the nine exceptions because you can't get under the real estate exception unless it's a fixture to the real estate. So if you could, you, you can get the pen dot and you can get to a township for the negligent ma maintenance of a roadway, but you're going to have to show how, how that tree issue was part of that. So, you know, letting the tree lay across the road uh, would probably be an issue, right? If they knew it was down and did nothing about it, uh, or if it was certain to fall at some point, maybe. Uh, but then the scope of what they have to watch, their duty is modified a little bit by that. So, you know, in the old days, we would say that a shopkeeper didn't have to know which bottle of oil broke and fell on the floor every single second in the store. And even the giant today, as long as they have somebody patrolling the store every 15 minutes to look for spills, they've met their duty. And the township's going to say, I've got 800 miles of road. Uh, we roll around, we take reports, we've got 911. If anybody tells us the tree's down, we send out a crew. But other than that, that's that's the end of our our duty or our obligation. And typically, I would imagine that when an issue like this comes up, the the remedy results in maybe a payment to put things back right or clear up the mess, mm -hmm. never never anything uh, punitive. No, and there's no really no punitive damages against government entities. And it makes sense because our, the theory of punitive damages is to teach somebody a lesson, and you can't really teach the government a lesson uh, because you have an alternative way of doing that, which is the voter, the ballot box, or other recourse. 